Welcome back. This is video three in our AirDrop DAP series, teaching you how to build your own AirDrop starter pack. In this episode, we're going to be covering the loading state and abstracting the code we wrote in the last lesson into its own component. You can see here we've got a disabled button, and so in this, we're going to show you how to make it. Five steps. First, we're going to create a new button component. Step two, we're going to copy the code out of our page component into the button component. Step three, create a new state variable to track the loading state. Step four, add the logic so that our component becomes disabled when the loading state is true. And step five, update our on-click logic to toggle on and off that uh, disabled logic, that loading logic, based off of the transaction. Let's get started. Step one, we're gonna head over to our terminal, make sure that we're up to date with our latest branch. So I'm gonna run git, I'm already on main, and I'm gonna pull the latest changes by running git pull origin main. Once we've got our latest changes, I'm going to check out my branch, git checkout dash d suites forward slash loading. I'm now going to get my development environment running with yarn dev. We can then refresh and we should see the latest version of our app. And we do. We should be able to airdrop. And we can. Um, so we can reject both of these. Not going to worry about them. Uh, yeah, we rejected. That's fine. Okay, so it looks like one, we don't have logic to handle anything, so we'll probably put in a try catch in this. Step one, let's create our new component. So we've got a components folder, and we're going to create a new folder called airdrop button. Inside of here, I'm going to put two files, one in index.ts. The other one is going to be airdrop button.tsx. We'll define this one first with const airdrop button equals an arrow function, and then we'll export it. Okay. Let's now import this inside of our index with import airdrop button and then we'll just export default airdrop button. We've now got our index set up, we've got our component set up. Now that we've created this new component, let's copy over the code that we currently have in our index.js or tsx. So here's the button, it's just this stuff. So let's cut that out, make a return function, and inside of there, paste this stuff. We're missing our onClick function, so let's bring over, well first let's try to use our airdrop button. Looks like we can, so that's awesome. Um, and now we need our onClick function, which is no longer being used here. So we'll take that out, move it into here. Now we're missing some of this other stuff. So none of these are being used. We can copy all these over. So the whole point of us abstracting these components into its own component is just to follow the principle of single responsibility principle, such that each component, every block of code should do kind of one thing and one thing only. And so by making a new component, we're making this one component just for the airdrop button. So that if anyone ever has a question and wants to use the airdrop button, they just have to go to one place the airdrop button. All right. I think we're getting pretty close to this working. Let's go ahead and just, uh, oh yeah, it looks like we're missing styles, so we'll copy the styles import. Even though I'm not a fan of the styles import. Um, we can remove this. And we should have just abstracted everything into its own component. Let's give it a shot. Come over here, refresh the page. Fingers crossed that we don't get any errors. Okay, we got, uh, okay, so our nesting is different. And so we probably have to go one more level to make sure that our styles import is correct. And that was right. Now we should be able to airdrop. It opens up the transaction. Should be able to sign it. I can. And once that happens, we've officially airdropped. 
And so we've copied the code over. Next thing we want to do is create a state variable for the loading parameter. And so we'll do that by saying const loading, comma, is loading equals use state, import use state. And we're going to initially set it to false because we're not initially loading. Then, so we've now set up our new state variable. Now we want to add in the disabled logic. To do that, we're going to change this from a div to a button. So we can have a disabled state button. And we're going to use Tailwind's class help of, uh, they should have some classes for disabled. Okay, we got disabled. There we go. We can change the opacity. That's an easy one. So let's do that. Copy that. Change our on click to use some of these curly braces. And then we can paste our new one. Uh, oh, 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 I'm doing this to the wrong thing. Not our on click function, I'm sorry. We want to do this to our styles, a class name. That was a silly mistake. There we go. All right. Um, and so now we can also say disable equals, let's just set it to true first, just to see how everything looks. It doesn't like that I'm using the braces when I don't necessarily need to. No, it's complaining about this. Disabled equals true is hopefully fine. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's see how it looks now with our disabled button. It should just be disabled all the time. We shouldn't be allowed to click it. It should not open up anything. It's correct. We can't click it. It's not clickable anymore. And so now, instead of setting it to true all the time, we're going to have this button be disabled whenever we're loading. Whenever we're in the loading state, let's disable the button. So now it should be clickable when we refresh. Um, however, it never goes to disabled, and so that's kind of a bug. Um, and also, if we, re if we reject this transaction, we get an error on the page. So let's fix both of those problems right now. If we reject this, page just crashes, so that's not good. So let's wrap everything over here inside of a try catch. A try catch. We'll catch the error. We'll console dot error the error. Um, and so now we're at least catching that error if it happens. Let's put all the stuff that we want to do inside of our try. We'll save that. And so here we're going to set set load or no. Not is loading up here. I'm sorry. Re rename that second variable inside of your use state to set loading. It's not is loading, it's set loading. So now we'll do set loading to true. And then outside of the catch at the end of here, we're going to say set loading to false. That way, in any case, no matter what happens, we should have the disabled state while the transaction's in progress. And even if we reject the transaction or something wrong happens, it should go disabled. So when we click, we're now in a disabled state. I'm no longer able to click this. I can't, nothing's happening when I click this. It's in the disabled state. Um, now if I reject, we should be able to see that it's clickable again. It's now clickable. One more thing I want to add into here is we want to, we now want to await the transaction. So let's say await tx.wait. And that's going to, that's not, that's going to make sure that we don't uh, undisable until the transaction is complete. I'm going to clean up the code by removing some of these console logs. Let's refresh and see this time if we stay in a disabled state until the transaction goes through and then we should be able to do an airdrop again. So we click the button, the button is now disabled, opens up the transaction. We can now sign our transaction. We should stay disabled then. We signed it. We are still disabled. We can't click the button. Nothing happens. We don't see our little hand that pops up. Um, we're still waiting, still waiting. And then whenever, whenever that transaction goes through, the transaction went through, we can now click the button again. So we can now click it again, and it'll open it up, and now it'll work. And so we've now added the on-click logic. That is everything. I'm going to push up these commits, but I don't think you need to watch that. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next video where we're going to set up the airdrop CSV uploads. Peace, y'all.